What do you want for your life by the year 2000? To get in my wedding dress. My goal is just to learn how to read. What a brave man you are. Life makeovers for the millennium. His no-nonsense approach helped me a lot. Do you think you teach people how to treat you? That's a great question, Phil. Fabulous question. Now he's here to help you. Doesn't it hurt that you're there every night without him? I've never looked at it that way until I've been on the show. We're going to show you how to get started. I want you to tell these people how you truly feel about yourself. I want to be able to say, I was raped, I am bulimic, that's who I am, and don't judge me because of that. Go shit it! It's our Oprah 2000 time capsule. I'm going to put mine in there, too. Coming up. two ways as just another day you wake up the morning of january 1st 2000 and you're the same person entering another century you're the same weight in the same rut with the same problems or you could use the millennium as a target you could let the millennium mean something because you know between now and 2000 we're going to be bombarded by the media with the year 2000 approaching you could say that life is going to be different for you in 2000 as we turn the century. You could say that life is going to be better. This is our Oprah 2000 time capsule, we're calling it. Uh, today, we're going to seal our personal goals inside. And when we hit the year 2000, we're going to then open it up and see how we all did. And I'm hoping that those of you at home who can't put yours in here will make your own, whether it's a drawer, whether it's a chest, whether it's just a personal place that you have, along with us. You write down your goals for the year 2000. And this is what I want you all to do. Think about this question. How would you like your life to change? What would it take to make you happier? That is a huge question that most people have real trouble answering. What would it take to make you happier? Then put that away after you've answered it and open it up New Year's Eve 1999. See how far along you are at being a happier person because you're not only going to just list what it would take to make you happier, but hopefully use this show as a catalyst to begin to embrace change in your life. That's what you're going to do, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. My first guests are very brave because they're setting their goals for the year 2000 on television. And that is a lot of pressure. Because when Kathy Gallagher wrote us, she said she felt like she was on the path to death. Where's your letter? Dear Oprah, my husband never holds my hand in public anymore. He always walks ahead or behind of me, making love well when we do. I hate it. I always have tears in my eyes after because I lost my Kleenex. Mm -hmm. After because I'm ashamed and so out of shape mm -hmm. and I get so tired. A month ago, someone asked me when my baby was due. I look at you, Oprah, and I see you laugh and smile. I wonder if someday I will ever laugh and smile. I can't even see it. Or, <laughs> or will I always have this lost look with tears down, going down my face? Mm. I'm 100 pounds overweight and scared, totally lost, and I just want to run and hide. But I know I can. What do you think it is for you? The, the weight, what all this weight means? Mm -hmm. Well, there's a lot of pain. Mm -hmm. There's been a lot of years of pain. Growing up, I was molested. Mm -hmm. I was sexually abused mm -hmm. at school. Mm -hmm. And that was then. That was then. This is now. This is now. And what is your goal for the year 2000? It's to get in my wedding dress and to be healthy. Because mm -hmm. my son has asked me, how come he's never seen me in my wedding dress? Your son? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That's it, because it didn't fit. OK, so you're going to put that in our time mm -hmm. capsule. OK, we're going to move on to Al. Al, yes. what is your goal? I, it's a long story, but I'm going to make it short. OK. My goal is just to learn how to read. All my life, I never read. Mm -hmm. I, uh... 
Because <laughs> I know how hard, you know what? You know, first we say everybody should know how to read, and then That's we right. chastise people because they don't know how right. to do it. And right. I was just rubbing your shoulder because I, what a I brave man you feel are. Good. Feel good. Okay, so you kept this a secret all these, all, years. all these years. Okay, and your daughter found out when you asked her to read the directions off a TV dinner box one That's time? That's correct. Okay, and you started classes about a year ago, about correct? About a year, year and a half ago. And now you can read at a fourth grade level. 4.5. 4.5, okay. <laughs> Four and a half grade level. And your goal is, your goal by the year 2000 is? I want to be able to read a book Read a book. I heard your show with you about, about people getting together, reading uh, uh, getting the book together club. and understand and comprehend a story. And I'm looking forward to that. But uh, the book I chose to read is uh, Gregory Peck, To Kill a Mockingbird. Okay. Oh, I think wow. it's a very interesting, interesting book. It's I'm actually a... Harper Lee and Gregory Peck plays oh. Atticus. <laughs> well, I was close. The movie, yes. I, to yeah. Kill a Mockingbird, yes. Okay, so I'm going to give this to you, and you're going to come back in 2000, and you're going to read. I'll first. guarantee it. You, you guarantee it? I guarantee it. Guarantee. <laughs> You're gonna love it. <laughs> the book is even better than the movie. I can't wait. It is, it really is. Now, Renee Alabella wants her best friend back. She says her goal by the year 2000 is to earn the trust of a friend she hasn't seen in over two and a half years. Why? What'd you do? Um, she's from Australia, mm -hmm. and she was living back at home in Australia. And um, while she was there, the man she's in love with here, I was dating him. Ooh. The friend is here. You yes. do know that. Yeah. And, and we told her ahead of time that the friend was here. And uh, that's a hard thing. Where's the friend? Where's the friend? Friend from Australia? Yeah, who was living in Australia. And how do you feel about what she just said? I was pretty ticked off. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Um... Come on, come on up here. Come on. Yeah. Renee, what do you want to say to her? I'm sorry. <laughs> And so what, is, what are you putting in the time capsule? Just a letter about um, how sorry I am and how by that time I hope she can forgive me mm -hmm. and we can be friends. Okay, now what do you plan to do to regain her trust? Because, you know, I, 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 I have a best friend, and we always talk about this because we see it on shows. I, I, can, I don't understand how that happens, but, you know, I'm not judging it. I just don't understand how that happens with a, with a best friend. So what do you plan to... I, 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 it's about building trust again. Whatever she wants me to do. Mm -hmm. I know it's going to take a long time. Just spending time with her, maybe. Mm -hmm. Just trying to rebuild the trust. Uh -huh. And hopefully someday she'll forgive me. Okay. Well, we'll see what happens. That's what you're putting in the time capsule. Put, put your stuff in the time oh. capsule. Put your visions Not for yourself. Not my book. Not the book, because you have to read it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to put mine in there, too. There you go. And after 25 years of marriage, he left with no note, no goodbye. And she wants to get over that heartbreak, but doesn't know how to feel happy again. We'll talk to some more people who want to change by 2000, who want to use the millennium as a catalyst for having a better life. We'll be back in a moment. and I continue to do this show is because I believe that television can be used as a voice for change in people's lives. I get up in the morning because there's a possibility that there's something that might be said on the air on this show that might lead somebody to the purest, truest part of themselves that might lead them to a better life. And that is one of the goals I put in for 2000 is to be able to use the show more effectively every day to have Americans and those of you who are watching us in 132 other countries, lead better lives. I believe it is possible for everybody to be great in their lives. I don't believe it's possible for everybody to be famous. I don't think everybody should be famous. Don't think you'd want to be famous. But I believe it's possible for every human being who incarnates to the planet to lead with their soul's desire. I believe that. If you can drown out the voices of the world, and understand what your inner voice wants you to do and be led by the purest part of yourself, the highest, purest part of yourself, and create the grandest vision for your life. And that's why I'm here. Angela Sharon wrote that she wants a complete life makeover. Yes? Yeah. I read your letter. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Would you like me to read it? Yeah, sure. Dear Oprah, I want you to make over my whole life. I want a new job in a new city, a new apartment. 
a new guy, absolutely, as well as a new look. I'm attractive, intelligent, and 32 years old. I have a bachelor's degree in marketing, and I graduated with a 4.0 GPA, so I am employable. I am a decent looking woman with a good heart. I live in San Diego, and I'm currently working. Mm -hmm. Doesn't sound too bad, but for the past two years, I can't help but shake this over, I can't shake this overwhelming feeling of hopelessness. I'm not having fun anymore. I'm not fulfilled by my job, and I have no one special in my life. I'm just not happy anymore. I need to change. So you wrote the letter saying you wanted a life makeover, but you don't really expect that I can do oh, it. Oh, absolutely not. Okay, good. I mean, it'd be great if you could. <laughs> yeah. But Wouldn't it, though? Yeah, you yeah. wave that magic wand. I'd be Glinda the Good Witch. There you go. <laughs> uh, Chris was married to the same man for 25 years, and then one day she woke up, no note, no explanation, no goodbye. He's moved on, but she still feels like her heart and soul were torn from her body, and she wants to move on and be happy, but doesn't know how. Is that, is that about sum it up? Correct. Yeah. How um, long ago was this? Um, he moved, it's about two years ago that he moved out. We were just divorced this last January. Yeah. And it would have been 20, we were married 26 years. Oh boy. So you didn't have a clue? Is that what you're saying? Right, he moved out at, when I was at work. Mm -hmm. And you didn't have a clue that there was anything wrong with the marriage? Mm, well, we had our ups and downs, but I didn't have a clue that he was going to move out. Uh huh. Did you have a clue that he was unhappy? No, I didn't. You really didn't? No, I and didn't. And even as you look back on it, you don't think that you were in denial at any point? No, I don't think I was. You don't? Okay. I read, too, in your letter where you said you'd take him back if he came back tomorrow. I guess I believe in, I don't believe in divorce. I believe in marriage, and I believe in the wedding bells. And when you love someone, you forgive them. Okay. What do you want? Do you know what you want? I, well, I want someone in my life that I can trust, and I want to move on, but I really don't know how to, um, and know, I don't know where to begin. Mm -hmm. Okay. I want to make the connection, too. Right. And so it, we're looking for some men, is what we're right, saying. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Lord help you all. <laughs> Lord help you all. Uh, next, the man who helped me get through my trial in Amarillo, Texas. He's got some great advice on how to live the life you really want. He's here because one of the, well, I'll tell you why he's here. When he, when, he'll be out in a minute. Back in a moment. We're talking today about how you can begin, wherever you are in your life, to lead a better life for yourself. And we're using the year 2000 as a target to help people reach their personal goals. Uh, my next guest is here to help lead you in the right d direction. I've chosen him because he is the person who helped me the most getting through my trial in Texas on a daily basis. Without Dr. Phil McGraw, I don't know how I could have gotten through it. He is a trial strategist who is also uh, one of the best psychologists I've ever run into. And I've talked to many, many, many psychologists over the years during the show. And I said to Phil at one point during the trial, if I ever needed therapy, he would be the one I go to. And he said, I don't take clients. So uh, <laughs> anyway, anyway, uh, one of the things that I shared with you, Phil, and when you were on the show, after we were celebrating the victory. Thanks again, by the way. You and You're Chip Babcock. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Is that one of the great lessons for me? And Phil had said this to me one night. One of the I, I'll share this with you all again. When I was first being sued by the cattlemen, I didn't believe it was happening. And all through the trial, even until the moment I arrived in Texas, I still couldn't believe it was happening. And even when we were picking the jury, I still couldn't believe it was happening. And even after the first day, I still couldn't believe it was happening. And Phil said to me, "Snap out of it. It is happening, and you need to learn to deal with it." And so that's why we began to strategize create a strategy for, um, for the trial. What I learned during the trial is, is that the, the trial that I was going through, the courtroom <clears throat> particularly, and I know you do courtroom sciences, is, is a metaphor for all trials in life. Because all trials in life serve to cause you to question, who am I really? What does this mean? Why is this happening to me? And how can I overcome it? And that was, the, what was a big epiphanal moment for me in the trial. And sure. what I realized is that everybody needs a strategy. That's why you're here. People need a strategy. It's the best I've ever seen for developing strategies for life. So what do you want to say to these people? Well, I think part of it is the same thing you had to deal with, and, and that is 
you've got to spend 5% of your time deciding whether where you are is a good deal or a bad deal and 95% of your time deciding what you're going to do about it. Right. Because, I mean, the ladies that we've talked to and, and, and all already today, none of ladies them Ladies and Al. Ladies and Al, excuse yeah. me. <clears throat> uh, but they all have said, I don't like where I am. Mm -hmm. And many of them got there through uh, events that simply aren't fair. But the fact of the matter is, whether you like it or not, that is where you are. That is what you've got to deal with. And the question becomes, what are you going to do about it? And wanting change won't get you change. Uh, it, that's not, that's simply not enough. You've got to do more than just want change. Right. Because lots of people have dreams for themselves. And or do you believe that the dream doesn't mean <clears throat> anything? Well, you're right. Everybody has dreams, but dreams come and go. I mean, they're like New Year's resolutions. Right. And an Oprah resolution isn't any better than a New Year's resolution because right. it won't last more than three or four days. You, you have to make choices and you have to be responsible for your life. And, and the point is, particularly for the people here today, everybody in the audience and everybody watching at home, once you say, this is the Oprah Winfrey Show and it's going to be a trigger event for the future, then you've put on notice and you cannot not choose. When you walked into this studio today and sat down and you said, you can either, the next two years are going to go by whether you're doing something with your life, constructive or not, so make a choice and do something about it. And you cannot not choose. I mean, it's like being at an intersection. You can go left, you can go right, you can go forward, or you can go back. Or you or can your, stand still. Your fifth choice is to stand right in the middle of the intersection and let life run you smooth over. But that is the fifth choice. And so you cannot not choose. So everybody here, if they hear what you're saying, are going to make some choices to be in a different place in the year 2000. Phil has prepared a few questions that we want you to ask yourselves. And listen, I know people hear about questionnaires and magazine stuff all the time. These are very important questions. Don't take them lightly because the number one question is, what do I want? And why is that number one? Well, it's number one because you can't go if you don't know where you're going. And my question to you when, you, when I say, what do you want? I've said a million times, you got to name it before you can claim it. If you don't know what it is you want, and I mean specifically, then you won't even know when you have it. And you can't start off on a journey if you don't have a destination. So I, I'm telling you, you can't claim it if you don't name it. And, and, and you've got to be specific in what you want. Okay, and that's but, something most people just simply don't know how to articulate. Okay, question number two. What are the barriers to having what I want? Yeah, the fact of the matter is we're talking today about making choices. You're already making choices. I mean, you, the, you, you are where you are today because you've made choices. And, and so the question that I put to you second is... That's so hard for most people to get, though. Well, but it's true. Yeah, I know. Oh, I know it's true, but it's hard. Isn't it hard to accept that wherever you are, whatever's going right or wrong, you are the one who is responsible for it? Yeah, and, and, that, and, and sometimes that's real hard oh, for people hard. to believe because it's so much easier to be Especially a in a trial. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. 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 Oprah kept saying, this just isn't fair. This said, isn't yeah. fair. It yeah. may not be fair, but it is. It is. Okay. And, and, but, I mean, you got to decide, what is it that you think is keeping you from getting where you want to be? I mean, we, we, we talked uh, earlier with, with Kathy about wanting to lose 100 pounds and get into her uh, wedding dress. I mean, you have to decide what's keeping me from getting where I want to be. I mean, what, what are the obstacles? What are the barriers? And then you got to take them down. A brick at a time, you got to take them down. Now, I think question number three that you have, what <clears throat> must I do to get it, first of all, is so key because, you know, for years I, I've struggled with the whole weight thing. And I want it to be thinner. I want it to be healthier. But I, the truth of the matter is I really wasn't willing to do what it was necessary to get it. And isn't that, isn't that really the key question? Because a lot of people want it, <clears throat> but if you're not willing to do what it takes to get it, that means you don't really want it. Now, most people misunderstand the importance of commitment and willpower. People say, all right, I'm really committed. I really have a lot of willpower for this. But willpower is fickle. Some days you're up, some days you're down. The fact of the matter is you're going to get where you want to go if you program yourself to do it. And I'm not telling you it's easy. There's no free ride. Uh, I've, I've said before, the difference between winners and losers is winners do things losers don't want to do. Winners do things that losers don't want to do. They get up in the morning when losers don't want to get up. They run when losers don't want to run. 
they discipline themselves. They require more of themselves than losers do because it's, it's just easier not to. And uh, so when you decide, what have I got to do to get it, you got to be very specific, and it's got to be programmed so it's not a matter of willpower. Okay, let's talk about the, the question <clears throat> of, I mean, there are, I would imagine, millions of women in particular watching right now who, some have written me, some have not, who think that the resolution to their happiness is going to be finding a man or finding something. Yeah. Millions, and there are about 20 sitting around here right now who think that the answer is in somebody else. Isn't the key if, the, if you, let me just say, if you are looking outside yourself for the answer, it's the wrong answer. There isn't a man alive who can fill the hole inside yourself if it's not filled. You have to be whole inside. Isn't that true? Well, it's exactly true. If, and, and I'm not saying that there isn't um, an awful lot of reward to a relationship. Right. And, and certainly there is. And I think there is, is, is great virtue in, in working to maintain a relationship through hard times as well as the good times. But the fact of the matter is when you give your power away to somebody else to determine how you feel about you, when you decide that somebody else who rejects you has determined your level of value and worth, then you are now a passenger and that's a bad place to be. You got to take your power back and you got to say, I decide who I am. I decide how I feel about me, whether you love me or whether you don't. Because the hardest thing that we have to do in life sometimes is give ourselves what we wish we could get from somebody else. And you know, you see a lot of parents that a lot of children who have been abandoned by their parents and they say, I just want so much for a father to come and say, you know, I'm really proud of you. Well, sometimes they're just not around to do that. And you got to look in the mirror and give it to yourself. And if your husband leaves you, if your wife leaves you, you may not be able to control them, but you can sure control how you react to it. And that's what you got to do. Next, she was homecoming queen, top student, cheerleader, perfect on the outside, but inside she was harboring a secret so devastating she slit her wrists in despair. We'll be back. Back in a moment. Good job, guys. A better life in 2000. That's our goal today. People are putting their goals uh, into our 2000 capsule. And I'm hoping that those of you at home will do the same for yourself. You don't need a trunk. You don't need a capsule. You can just put it in an envelope in a drawer and start today. Letting this show be a catalyst, a reminder that you have the power to change whatever it is that you don't like in your life. And I believe that everybody, no matter even how happier you are, because I'm pretty happy, got a lot of shoes. Uh, <laughs> Pretty happier. But I think I could even be more fulfilled and happier, living my life to its uh, greatest uh, purpose, I think. And I think everybody has the power to do that. Dr. Phil McGraw, who is uh, from CSI in Dallas, is a, is a trial strategist who is strategizing for all of us today how to begin to um, lead better lives. You were saying to me during the break about um, Christine? Well, I, I noticed whenever we were talking to Christine and she was saying some of the things she said, like, um, I'm, I'm, I'm really hurt and I'd take him back in a minute. I, I noticed a lot of audience reaction that, that didn't seem to make common sense. Is that true? Yeah. I mean, are some of you bothered by that? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. 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 And we, we don't mean to pick on you, right. but you are sitting in the front row, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you play, you pay. Now, the, the question, uh, the, the question I, I've got for you is, what do you want? I mean, we've talked about that a little bit, but if we're talking about where you want to be in 2000, answer the question, what do you want? I think I want to be more spiritual, to be able to trust in myself again. Uh -huh. You know, to, to be able to rely on myself. So what's keeping you from doing that? I guess I, I've got to um, accept. Except what? Except the divorce and move on with my life. Now, don't tell me what I want to hear. Tell no, me no, the that truth. Is, that is what, what is I have keep to do. What is keeping you from feeling better about it? I mean, doesn't it hurt that you're there every night without him? Yes. So tell us about the loneliness in your life. I, I have two children, so they 
and I have a, a grandson that I can spend my time with. Mm -hmm. If your husband, and I don't, I don't know him, and I assume that you're a reliable historian, but if he did what you're describing, then would you suggest that he didn't treat you with much dignity and respect? I guess so. I, I've never looked at it that way until I've been you, on the show. You guess so? <laughs> okay, now let me ask you something. Do you think you teach people how to treat you? I don't know. She's answering the question, not y'all. <laughs> <laughs> well, That's I, I a mean, great just, question, Phil. Yeah, yeah, I, fabulous I question. Yeah. I'm just asking you, just real simply, because uh, obviously... Did you hear the question? Yes, I did. Do you think you, that you, you... What is the question? <laughs> Do you think that you... <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that you taught him how to treat you? Do you think that you taught him that he could disrespect you in this way? No. Well, do you, how do you think he decided to do that? Ooh. I don't, I, I don't know. Well, if you did know, what would it be? <laughs> if you did know why he was treating you that way, what would the reason be? Probably because I let him get away with it. Bingo. You let him get away with it. Now, Bingo! Right, Good on. girl. Right, let, That's a start. Let, let me ask you something. I wonder what would happen in his relationship with you if all of a sudden, instead of saying, I just really want you to come back, I'm really hurting that you're gone, if all of a sudden you said, no, wait a minute, I don't deserve this, I'm going to treat myself with dignity and respect. And, buddy, if you want in my life, that's the price of poker. <laughs> now, and, and, he may, and he may say, I, I don't want to play if that's the price. And if that's the deal, you're better off to know that right now than you are a year from now or two years from now. Right. Right. And, and all I'm asking you is, can you make part of the goal that you want to be in 2000 is with him or without him? I would love for you to say, with him or without him, beginning right now today and moving towards the year 2000, my goal is to be whole again and have self-respect and dignity with him or without him. We'll be right back and meet Shannon. We'll be right back. Back in a moment. Dr. Phil, I call him Phil, but he is a doctor. Phil has said that the difference between, this is what he says to me all the time, that the difference between a dream and a goal is a timeline. If I say it to you all the time, you ought to know. <laughs> <laughs> We're on TV, Phil. Oh, that's right. Okay. We're on no, it, I, it, the difference between a dream and a goal is basically three things. Number one, a goal is specific. It is very specific. It doesn't say I just want to be happy. My dog wants to be happy. What is happy for you? What does that mean for you to define it operationally? And secondly, goals have timelines. You know, dreams are just, oh, I want to do better. Goals have timelines where you say, by such and such a date, I am going to be in this place. And, and so you identify those interval steps. And third, a goal has accountability. If you don't have somewhere you got to report in, to see that you're doing what you say you're going to do, then you're not going to do it. And it, maybe it's a friend, your mother-in-law, your husband, your wife, somebody. When you set a goal with a timeline, you got to say, every Friday, I'm looking you in the eye and telling you whether I am doing what I said I was going to do or not. So you got to be specific, you've got to have a timeline, and you have got to have accountability. Sometimes, though, we all know this, horrible things happen to people, horrible, which seem beyond their control. Shannon Lucy wrote us a heartbreaking letter, crying out for help. This is Shannon's letter. Dear Oprah, I really need your help. When I was 13, I was raped. I have been bulimic ever since. Everyone thought I had it all. I was a homecoming queen cheerleader. But one thing was missing, me, in capital letters. Mm -hmm. I had no inner self. I hated my body, tortured it every day through purging, 
laxative abuse, compulsive exercising. It was and still is hell. No one had a clue. I deserve an Oscar for my performance. That is what it was. I started drinking heavily. One night I got so sick of seeing my reflection at the bottom of the toilet that I decided to take my life. I slit my left wrist twice. I awoke the next morning alive. I want my life back, capital letters. I don't want to live a lie anymore. I am so scared. I am afraid I am going to die. This is a huge step being here. This is huge. Isn't it, Dr. Phil? It is. Mm -hmm. huge. <laughs> So where do you begin? Well, tell us why you came. I mean, why are you here today? I am here today to come to terms with what happened to me and accept that and everybody has bad in their life and move on. You know, I don't need to wallow in my own self-pity anymore and that's what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So what do you want? I want to be able to look at the show and say, that's me, you know, that's not, you're not pretending to be somebody else. Um, you know, I don't want to be this happy, smiling face anymore. If I'm not, I want to be happy when I'm happy and sad when I'm sad. And well, Would it be an honest statement to say that what these people see when they look at you right now, which is very attractive and, and perky and uh, socially correct, that's not at all what you see when you look in the mirror, is it? No. So tell them what you see when you look in the mirror. Be honest. I, um, I hate myself so much I don't even want to look in the mirror. I, um, I just see a horrible person that's not worth being here, you know? I. I feel huge and just want to be numb. So what you just said to us a few minutes ago when everybody applauded when you said, <clears> I want to do this and move, take my life and move on, that, what, what was that? That's the absolute truth. I want to. You want to? Well, let me, to. can I be honest with you? Mm -hmm. I didn't believe a word you said. Okay. <laughs> I believe you said what you think you're supposed to say. I believe you said what you think the goals are supposed to be because that's what getting better means. But what I'm telling you is you can't change what you don't acknowledge. Mm -hmm. And if, if you're here and have the courage to be here, then I want you to tell these people how you truly feel about yourself after being raped and punishing yourself for all of these years since that time. I mean, how do you really feel about Shannon? I hate her. Okay, why? Um, how did the rape make you feel? It made me feel like, um, I deserved it, and it has totally, you know, every day from that point on, I am this worthless piece of trash that, um, that gets attention just because of, um, you know, my body and my attractiveness, and and I just want to be. I want people to to like me because because of who I am, not because of what I look like, and. So you think you caused the rape? Um, yeah. So you were 13 years old, and somebody comes in that is bigger and stronger and smarter and more aware, and he uses you and abuses you, and you wind up feeling like a worthless piece of trash, and that's okay? It's not okay, yeah. It's not okay, is it? And you're scared that every one of these people judge you when they know the truth about you, isn't that right? Mm -hmm. and, and my question to you, when I say, what do you want, I'm asking you, are you truly, truly, bottom line, tired of looking in the mirror and seeing a worthless, devalued piece of trash? Yes. I mean, are you really tired of that? I want, I want to be able to say, you know, I was raped and I am bulimic and that's who I am, you know, and don't judge me because of that. Like, I don't want, I don't. You just did. You just said that. You know, I, you, you heard us say that you always have choices. Mm -hmm. And in a few minutes, we're going to talk about what those choices are. We'll be right back. Be right back.
Talking to Shannon, who's had some devastating things happen in, in her life. Um, and many times I think things happen. When horrible things happen, I was just saying this on the show the other day, they can either take you out or they can move you up. They can take you out, just knock you out, and you never get up again. Or you can use that to move yourself forward, be stronger, be stronger. So what did you want to say, Bill, to her? Well, you, you know, you heard us sit here earlier today and talk about that people have choices. And I think you guys would agree, if you're 13 years old and somebody comes in and rapes you, you didn't choose that, okay? So, so the, point, the, the, point is, where's the, the point is, where's the choice? And I'm saying the choice is always there. It may come after the event. The choice may be in terms of what you do about it, that you can make choices in terms of how you react to it and what you do about it. And you can't always do that by yourself, and that's why we're social beings. And every one of you can make a difference today in, in Shannon's life as well, if she's willing to be honest. Stand up for me. Oprah, come with us. Come here, come here. <laughs> come here, come here, come here. Come here. I, I want you to stand right here, and you've been judged by everybody that's ever looked at you. You know that, don't you? That's how you feel. Mm -hmm. I want you to tell these people how you feel when you look in the mirror, how you feel about yourself. I mean, be honest. I know it's not pretty, but be honest. I am. Um really want to sit down. I understand. <laughs> I, I want to disappear. Mm -hmm. I can't stand my own skin. I can't be me. I hate it. Because you just, didn't you just slit yourself mm -hmm. recently? March 4th. March 4th. Right, but, you know, I've said before that you got to name it before you claim it. And I want you to look these people in the eye right now and say, you guys, I have hurt long enough I have hurt long enough. Well, Come on. I have hurt long enough. No, really. Think Tell about it. Think about it. Think about it. Tell Let it come you. from the inside of yourself. I want to live. I, oh, I yeah. want to live. Really? And I've hurt long enough. You're talking from your head. Tell them from your heart. I have hurt long enough. I have paid long enough. No, look them in the eye. Look mm -hmm. them in the eye, because that's the thing. You're afraid to look them in the eye. I've hurt long enough. Mm. I've paid long enough. I've paid long enough. And it is my time, and it is my turn. It's my time, and it's my turn. It's your turn for what? To live. Now, people, I want you to look at her because she feels judged by everybody here. And I'm telling you, if you think this girl has hurt long enough, if you think she's felt dirty long enough, if you think she has paid long enough, then stand up for her right now. $12,000 in debt, and she says that her goal is to be debt-free by 2000 Jennifer, come on up and put in the time capsule. 12000 in debt. <laughs> Susan Viscotti wants to be better to her husband and her children and herself by the year 2000. She wrote to me saying she feels like she takes her husband and children for granted, and she often catches herself being selfish and crabby and sarcastic, and she wants to change so her children will grow up to be good people, which is the goal, good people. Mm -hmm. She says her husband doesn't deserve to live like he does. She wants to appreciate her family, and she's written a letter to her family pledging to change, to put, um, to put them first, to make them a priority, and to make herself a priority so she can be better for them. Is that correct? Yeah. I summed it up pretty well? That's pretty good. <laughs> Thank you. You want to put that in a time capsule? Come back. 
Thank you, Dr. McGraw. We'll be seeing more of you, buddy. Mm -hmm. Thank you.